this short video is to show how we can target various elements on an HTML page so that we can control the user's interactions with the page. Now we have a script tag up in the head which is going to load our JavaScript file and in the body there's an h1 and three paragraphs one of the h1 tags has a class, one of the paragraphs has a class, one of them has an ID, one of them has neither. So I'm going to show you how to target these different things. And one thing I want to draw your attention to is right here. The JavaScript is at the top of the file. It's being loaded before the HTML. So we need, within our JavaScript, the first thing we have to do is to tell it, don't run any scripts until after the HTML has loaded. So what I've done is in here I've written two alert messages, one of them at the top of the file and one of them inside my window on load function. This is saying to the browser, okay, browser object, when you have finished loading the current page, I want you to run this function. Okay, so let's jump over to the browser and I will load this page. There we go. Here's a message coming up saying, the HTML has not loaded yet and you can see there's no content on the page. So this was the first alert. The second one I'll get will be inside the function. There it is. And it's after this stuff has been displayed on the page. Okay, so that's the first concept I want to illustrate. This is why we use the window on load because we're going to be targeting the various elements. I'm going to create a variable called h and that is going to be my h1 element. So document query selector is the method that I'm going to use. Nice thing about Dreamweaver is it gives us this code complete. It tells us what the functions are, what they're expecting, the built-in methods and objects. Document is our web page. Query selector, you can see it says selector inside here. That means that we are looking for a CSS selector. I can say that I want to find an H1 tag that's going to work. And then just to target it, I'll say h1 dot enter HTML. I'm going to change the text inside of that h2 h1 tag. This has been updated. There we go. Just any old text will do. All right, I'll jump back to the browser. So as soon as I load it, this is the main heading is going to change to that new text. This has been updated. All right, refresh the page. There we go. So after the HTML was loaded, the heading was changed. Okay, let's look at another way to target things. So P, it's going to be my or P1. That'll be my first paragraph. Document dot query selector. Query selector will find the first thing that matches any CSS selector that I put in here. So that's the first paragraph on the page. It just happens to be the one without the ID or class name. So we'll say p1.style.display equals none. So I'm going to hide that first paragraph. I'm going to make it disappear from the page. Jump back here. So this one with no class or ID, that was the first one. I said find paragraph. Query selector finds the first one. It's going to be this one. It's going to disappear when I refresh. Boom. Gone. All right. Next one. My second paragraph. Query selector. going to have a CSS thing and I'm going to do the same thing. P3 is going to be my other one just to illustrate different ways that we can find these. All right, One of them has an ID, one of them has a class. So inside here class is second, ID is third. So in CSS if I was writing a class as a selector I would put a period in front of it. There we go. And if it's an ID, third, that's going to work. So p2.style.color, I'll just change its color just to show that I can do that. And for the third one, I will change it and give it a border property. 
Okay, so this guy is going to be changed to CC0033, and this guy is going to get a border which will be 4 pixels solid red. Okay, we'll jump over to the browser, refresh, and there we go. First paragraph's gone, second one, the color's been changed to kind of a pinkish red, and the third one has a bright red border around it, which is 4 pixels solid. The H1, we are covered, has been updated. So that is how you target things, various elements. Now if I wanted to add an event to something, I'm going to do it the same way as I did with the window object here. Object event equals function. So let's say it's going to be the third one, the paragraph that has the border on it. P3, that's my object. The event that I'm going to use is on click. Now I can write an anonymous function like this. This is a function with no name. Or optionally, what I can do is I can have a function. I'm going to call it another func. And I'll just scroll up my page a little bit here. So function another func. And inside here, what I want to do is I'm going to remove that border. p3.style.border equals, and we can use the word none to actually remove the border. So when the page loads, this happens. All these things happen to that third paragraph after the HTML loads, after the browser is finished reading it, our window on load function will run. Then, part of that function is to find this third paragraph, give it a border, and tell it, you need to listen for click events. If a user clicks on you, run this function. Notice I don't have the parentheses at the end here. This is very important. If I put the parentheses on here, the function would run right at that moment. It would call it immediately. Without them, it waits and says, okay, when they click, that's when I'm supposed to do it. So another func will remove the border, but only after the user clicks on it. So I'll refresh the page. There we go. Updated. First one's gone. Second one's pinkish red. Third one red border on it. If I click it, border is gone. So we've interacted with the web page. We've added some interactivity by connecting an event to another function. And we've accessed style properties of all these different elements.